Okay, so before we start, we want to enjoy another wonderful performance of uh, Sonia Mazar at the piano and Sofia Lishinsky uh, that, uh, is, uh, that will sing. They will perform from Rossini, L'Italiana and Algeri, Aria di Sabella, the song Crew the Solo Time, and also from Bizet, uh, of, uh, from his famous opera Carmen. They will perform song of Carmen, Sigidilia. Please.
uh, great pleasure and honor to present Professor Makoto Kobayashi from KEQ, a National Laboratory for High Energy Physics in Japan. Professor Kobayashi had a very important contribution in the building of the standard model of particle physics. Together with Maskawa, he had predicted the existence of the third generation of quarks and leptons, explaining in this way the violation of CT symmetry in nature. Professor Kobayashi had graduated from the Nagoya University. After a period in Kyoto University, he moved to KEK Laboratory. During years, he has served as the head of physics division there, and later as the direction of the K director of the KEK Institute of Particle and Nuclear Studies. He is a member of the International Institute of Advanced Studies and the director of the Japan Society for Promotion of Science. Professor Kobayashi was awarded many honors and prizes, among them the Nishina Memorial Prize, the Sakurai Prize, the Japan Academy Prize, the Order of Culture of the World, and of course, the 2008 Nobel Prize for Physics. Today, Professor Kobayashi will tell us about the development of particle physics. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm very happy that uh, I can talk to you here. Uh, actually, the, uh, I came to Israel. Uh, oh, sorry. Not this, not this, not the other one. That's OK. The other one. Is it working? <laughs> okay. Ah, that worked. Okay, thank you. Uh, I came to Israel via Korea, but uh, unfortunately, the big typhoon hit uh, the uh, airport in Korea. So the, my flight was almost canceled. But finally, I, I could arrive here, but uh, uh, it delayed uh, by uh, almost half a day. So uh, I'm very happy to be here. OK, uh, in this lecture, the, I plan to uh, talk about the uh, uh, history of the particle physics. Uh, you may uh, think that the, the particle physics is just uh, uh, one of the uh, research field of physics, but uh, uh, particle physics is uh, uh, somewhat special because uh, it pursuing the, the uh, most fundamental part uh, of the laws of the nature. Therefore, the uh, history of the particle physics is the history of our fundamental understanding of nature. So uh, I hope that uh, you are interested in this subject. Okay, uh, now, uh, physics uh, made a great progress in the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, among them, that the special relativity and uh, quantum mechanics uh, are the most important achievement. The uh, timeline is something like uh, this. In uh, 1905, Einstein established the special relativity. In uh, 1911, the uh, Rutherford revealed the structure of, of an atom. He found that the most of the ma mass of the atom is con concentrated to the 
uh, atomic nucleus. In 1913, uh, Niels Bohr proposed a famous uh, atomic model, uh, which is uh, a precursor of uh, quantum mechanics. His model reproduces the, the hydrogen spectrum beautifully, and it was useful to understand the structure of an atom's not only hydrogen. However, the uh, uh, Bohr model was not uh, satisfactory in many ways as a fundamental theory. Uh, elucidation of the uh, essence of quantum theory was, made, uh, was done by the uh, Heisenberg and uh, Schrodinger uh, from two uh, completely different approaches in 1925. Uh, uh, Heisenberg took uh, a so-called uh, matrix approach and uh, Schrodinger proposed the Schre Schrodinger equation. Uh, so the uh, special relativity and uh, quantum mechanics are two pillars of the modern physics and uh, uh, indispensable for particle physics. The probably some of you are not familiar with the, uh, the concept of the relativity and the quantum mechanics. So uh, I will try to make the following talk uh, understandable with minimal knowledge of relativity and the quantum mechanics. For the present, I, 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 I should explain a couple of the basic facts which will be helpful to understand the following talk. Uh, in special relativity, uh, the energy of a free particle is given by this formula. Uh, for small velocity, uh, uh, this is expressed in this uh, way. And the, in the classical mechanics, the, we, can, we are using the, just the second term as the e, 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 energy of the free particle, kinetic energy of the free particle. The existence of the first particle, uh, first term is uh, uh, one of the important conclusions from the relativity. Okay? Numerically, the uh, first term is much larger uh, than the second term in the uh, circumstance uh, where the classical mechanics is valid. Uh, nevertheless, it was ignored. The reason why uh, we can ignore such a large uh, term uh, is that in the classical mechanics, uh, it, it, it is assumed that the particle is uh, preserved and the mass does not change. What does not change uh, can be ignored uh, or, uh, 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 or it, it's not noticed, even noticed. On the other hand, the, uh, uh, as I will explain, Later, in particle physics, that the creation and the annihilation of the particle take place frequently, then we cannot ignore the first term um, in particle physics. When a particle annihilates or disappears, uh, this uh, rest uh, energy is released. Released means that the, the amount of this energy is shared by the by the uh, kinetic energy of the final state particles. On the other hand, in order to create a particle, we need uh, just the amount of the energy. Uh, creation is usually done by the collision of the very very high energy uh, uh, particle collision. In connection to the quantum mechanics, uh, we, we should keep in mind uh, particle wave duality. Uh, this means that uh, the, the wave has a property of the particle and the particle has a property of the wave. For example, in the classical physics, we learn that the uh, light is electromagnetic wave. But uh, according to the quantum theory, light behaves uh, like a particle, uh, namely exchange of the energy goes through uh, 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 a discrete unit. 
This is called a photon. Okay, uh, conversely, the uh, electron is usually the regarded as a particle, but uh, scattering of the electron uh, sometimes show a diffraction pattern, which is uh, uh, characteristic to wave. So uh, you should keep in mind that uh, this particle wave duality. Okay, uh, this is uh, the, the preparation for the uh, following talk. Okay, now uh, uh, I'd like to move on to the history of the particle physics. Uh, uh, this is a plan of my talk. Uh, uh, we can say that the particle physics emerged around 1930s. It's difficult to identify a single event as a birth of the particle physics. So I would like to tell you uh, uh, about these three uh, things, which can be regarded as the roots of the particle physics. After the birth, uh, particle uh, physics experienced some uh, difficult time in which a number of the unexpected facts were discovered and the fire theoretical understanding was not satisfactory. Uh, since time is limited, I plan to talk about only a few uh, important events uh, according to these uh, uh, subtitles. Situation has changed uh, in in 1970s, the particle physics made a, a rapid progress, and the so-called standard model was established. Uh, experimental verification of the standard model continued until recently. So uh, I'll explain this uh, story here. Uh, now I'd like to start with this uh, first item. Okay, uh, uh, I said that uh, special relativity and quantum mechanics are two uh, pillars of the modern physics. However, however the special relativity was uh, established without uh, quantum mechanics. Actually, it was completed before quantum mechanics uh, was established. And uh, quantum mechanics was uh, based on non-relativistic kinematics. Uh, although special relativity was already available at that time. As a matter of fact, the compatibility of the special relativity and the quantum mechanics is not obvious. Uh, compatibility has been achieved step by step, but even today that, uh, uh, we have not yet reached the final uh, resolution. Okay, uh, so the, uh, in some sense that the, the, this uh, uh, resolution is the history of the particle physics. One of the first steps uh, to this direction was the Dirac equation. Oh, sorry. Uh, in, in 1928, he, uh, Dirac, proposes the uh, Dirac equation to describe the relativistic motion of of the electron quantum mechanically. He proposed it as a, a replacement of the Schrodinger equation, which is fundamental equation of quantum mechanics. Uh, just for your uh, reference, they, they look like this. This is a Dirac equation, and this is a, uh, the, the Schrodinger equation. Uh, Dirac equation had one difficulty. Uh, it's the uh, existence of the negative energy solution. The soli uh, solution exists for uh, this color region, uh, greater than mc squared and uh, uh, less than minus mc squared. So uh, positive energy solution uh, is what we expect, but the negative one are uh, mysterious. The conclusion uh, Dirac reached was uh, something like this. The negative energy state uh, occupied by the electron from the first 
since the uh, since two electrons cannot occupy the same state, this is called the Pauli principle. Uh, it precludes that the possibility that the positive energy electron fall into the negative uh, energy state. However, important consequence from this interpretation is that uh, there would be a, a whole state uh, which had the same mass uh, as the electron, but positive uh, electric charge. Uh, this is the uh, antiparticle of the electron. Uh, so he predicted the existence of the antiparticle first. The antiparticle of the uh, electron was found in cosmic ray event in 1932 by Anderson, which is now called the positron. The positron is an uh, antiparticle electron. The uh, existence of the antiparticle is not restricted to the electron. In general, any particle has its, its uh, corresponding antiparticle. The particle and uh, corresponding antiparticle has uh, have the uh, same mass, but uh, their ele electric charge are, are opposite. Okay, uh, these conclusion uh, derived from the relativistic quantum field theory, uh, which is a, a standard tool merging uh, relativity and the quantum mechanics. Uh, I, unfortunately, I have no time to explain about the few theories, so the, I, I just uh, uh, say this uh, result. In the uh, antiparticle of the electron is the uh, uh, positron, and the, uh, the antiparticle of the proton is called uh, antiproton, and uh, denoted by the uh, p uh, by attaching a bar p bar. Uh, similarly, the antiparticle of the neutron is antineutron, uh, and so on. Probably, uh, I should make one remark. Uh, also, I, I said that the uh, antiparticle always exists. Uh, uh, in case of the electrically neutral particle, it's possible that the particle and its antiparticle are identical. Uh, you should know that it's also the, uh, uh, possible that they are not identical, even they are neutral particles. Uh, very complicated, but uh, a popular example of the identical case is a photon. Photon is the, the, the uh, uh, it's uh, antiparticle. It's still it's antiparticle, okay? And uh, uh, antiparticle is a photon. Of the photons. Okay. Uh, uh, here we note an important property of the particle and antiparticle. Okay. Uh, it's a pair creation and pair annihilation. Uh, namely, the particle and the antiparticle are created or dis uh, disappear in pairwise. Uh, this is a typical example of the. Uh, 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 for the electron and the positron, and if we are very energetic two photons collide, a pair of the electron and the positron can be produced. And on the other hand, if the electron and the uh, positron collide, uh, they would disappear and a photon are produced. Uh, you may understand why this process is possible from the whole theory viewpoint, but I skipped it. Uh, uh, you can understand that the discovery of the antiparticle was a big surprise uh, for the people of that time. Uh, at the same time, it was also a surprise that the particle are created and disappear. Okay. It was a new feature characteristic to particle physics. So we can say that uh, uh, this is one of the roots of, of the particle physics. Okay, okay uh, I have to read. Uh, next, I uh, move, uh, we move on to the second point uh, of the birth of the particle. It's a discovery of the uh, neutron 
in the Yukawa theory. Okay. Uh, in 1932, the uh, neutron was discovered by Chadwick. Uh, before that, uh, uh, atomic nucleus was mysterious. Uh, for instance, the relation between the, the uh, uh, atomic number and the mass looks uh, irregular. So the uh, discovery of the neutron solved this problem. And the uh, atomic nucleus consists of the tightly bound protons and the neutrons. Then a new uh, problem arrived. It was uh, the uh, what is a force which bounds the proton and the neutron? Uh, it cannot be electromagnetic nor gravitational force. Uh, it's a new kind of the force, uh, which uh, we now call the strong interaction. In 1935, uh, Yukawa uh, proposed the following mechanism for this problem. Uh, he considers that the force between the proton and the neutron is caused by the exchange of the new kind of the particle, uh, denoted the pi here. Uh, if the exchange particle has a mass, the, the uh, force uh, uh, does not uh, reach far. Uh, it's limited by the uh, uh, so-called Compton wavelengths of the particle. The, this situation can be expressed by the formula of the, uh, for the uh, potential energy. Okay. Uh, anyway, she could uh, uh, estimate the mass of the exchanged particle from the size of the nucleus. The mass he obtained is around 100 MeV over C square, which is lighter than the proton uh, and heavier than the electron. All right, this particle is called meson, uh, which implies a particle with intermediate mass. The uh, history of the experimental discovery of the Yuka particle was a little bit complicated. And in 1937, uh, two years later, um, after the publication of the Yuka theory, a new particle was uh, uh, found in the cosmic ray. The particle has a mass similar to Yukawa's prediction. Uh, so the Yukawa theory uh, attracted much attention, but uh, subsequent uh, study of the new particle reveals that the uh, property of the uh, interaction of the new particle are not compatible with the, 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 that of the Yukawa particle. Uh, after some confusion, finally, the, in 1947, the true Yukawa particle was found. And in the uh, uh, also in the cosmic ray event, the Yucca particle or Yucca meson is now called pion, and the uh, uh, particle uh, found in 1937 is uh, uh, called muon. Okay, uh, this is the beginning of the study of the new interaction or new force which is different from the familiar classical force uh, gravitation the electromagnetic uh, magnetism. Okay, uh, now uh, we can uh, third uh, topic of the birth of the particle physics. Uh, Radioactivity was found in the end of the 19th century, and uh, there was the three kinds of the uh, uh, radioactivity, uh, which are called the alpha, beta, and gamma. gamma. Uh, what we are going to consider here is a beta disintegration. Uh, in the beta disintegration, or beta decay, the uh, uh, nucleus N. Uh, emit an uh, electron and change into another nucleus, N prime. N is called the parent and the N prime is called the daughter. At first, uh, it was a, a mystery that the emitted electron has a continuous uh, spectrum of e energy. 
this is because that the, if the uh, decay process is uh, like this, uh, the electron uh, uh, has, has to have a definite energy determined by the mass difference of the n and the n prime. Uh, in 1930, uh, Power introduced a, a neutrino to solve this mystery. His argument was the following. The neutrino is electrically neutral and almost massless particle and undetectable by the usual devices. In the beta decay, the neutrino is emitted together with the electron. Okay. Uh, so that the energy is shared by the electron and the neutrino. And in such cases, the spectrum of the electron can be uh, continuous. The experimental confirmation of the existence of the neutrino was done many years later. Uh, by considering the uh, neutrino, the problem of the spectrum was solved, but uh, still there was a question where do these electron and neutrino come from? Okay. Are they uh, confined in the parent nucleus uh, before the uh, decay? Uh, answer to this question was given by Fermi in 1933. Uh, the point of uh, his theory, Fermi's theory, is that the uh, electron and uh, neutrino are created at the moment of the interaction. And the uh, neutron changed to the proton at the same time. Here, again, the creation and the annihilation of the particle appeared. In the uh, quantum field theory, the field variables are acting as the creation and annihilation operator of the uh, corresponding particle. So that uh, this form of the interaction uh, uh, describes the, the, the situation quite smartly. Okay, uh, this Interpretation uh, is a new kind of the, uh, sorry, this interaction is a new kind of interaction, different from gravity, electromagnetic, and strong interaction. The new interaction is called the weak interaction. The word of the strong and the weak comes from the strength of the interaction, but uh, you, you should note that the strong interaction and the weak interaction are the name of the interaction. It's a technical term. So far, we, we look at the three uh, development which took uh, place in uh, early in 1930s. I think that the particle physics emerged from these uh, different directions, and all of them are important elements of the particle physics. Uh, here, uh, let, let me summarize the characteristics of the particle physics. Uh, uh, first of all, the, in particle physics, the, the special relativity and the quantum mechanics are essential. The probably any problem arising from the merging the process of the special relativity and the quantum mechanics is the uh, research subject of the particle physics. The uh, standard tool merging the relativity and the quantum mechanics is uh, uh, relativistic quantum field theory. Uh, therefore, the study of the field theory has been the one of the uh, central uh, issue of the particle physics. Secondary, uh, oh, I, I should show this one. Okay. Uh, uh, secondly, uh, uh, as we have already seen, that the creation and annihilation of the particle and change of the species of the particle are common feature of the particle physics. Uh, it, it's a, uh, a completely new feature, uh, quite different from the classical physics. Okay, and the thirdly, the two uh, new kind of interaction shows up, show up in, in particle physics. The fundamental interaction of the nature is, uh, is these four kinds. Uh, among them, the gravitation and the electromagnetic are familiar in the classical physics. On the other hand, the no, uh, notion of the uh, strong uh, interaction, the weak interaction, were established only after the 1930s, as we have seen. Now uh, we move to the, the uh, subsequent development uh, after the birth. Uh, as for the era before 
I will talk about only a few important facts. The first topic is the discovery of the new particles. Okay. Uh, these are the elementary particles which have appeared so far in my talk. The proton and the uh, neutron as a particle com uh, uh, composing the nucleus. And the pion is the, the particle predicted by Yukawa, uh, which mediates the uh, binding force of the, the nucleus. The electron is the most popular one, and the neutrino neutrino uh, is a hypothetical particle introduced by Pauli. The muon is a particle no one requested. As I said, it was uh, mistaken for the Yuka particle at first. Uh, eventually, it turned out that the muon is quite similar to the electron, except the mass. Uh, the mass of the muon is about uh, 200 times heavier than the electron. Among them, the uh, proton in the uh, the new proton, the neutral and the pion are called the hadron, and the uh, wide the electron and the uh, muon, the neutrino, are called the lepton. Uh, this classification is based on their interaction. This is a table of the interaction of the hadrons and the leptons. Hadron undergoes strong interaction, while leptons do not. Okay. Uh, electromagnetic interaction is a, a little complicated. The interaction depends on the electric charge of the particle. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, the yeah, weak interaction is uh, uh, quite uh, universal. Okay. Turning back to this uh, table, uh, in the early 1950s, many new particles were found. Uh, they, uh, uh, they all belong to the uh, hadrons, and those new particles are called uh, strange particles. The, you may wonder about the uh, fate of these new particles. Usually they are uh, unstable particles, uh, for instance, the strange particle uh, decay into the non-strange particle like proton or pion within a very short uh, time after the creation. And uh, they do not remain in, in our uh, world, uh, so we can uh, see them only in a very short period after the creation. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, conversion of strange, strange particles to non-strange particles take place through the weak interaction. And the pi and the muon are also unstable. Okay. Uh, as a result of the discovery of the strange particles, uh, the number of the hadron increased uh, so that it became difficult to regard all of them as a fundamental object. Uh, it was natural to think that the hadron have an uh, internal structure and they are made of uh, fewer fundamental elements. Uh, and early work in this direction was done by Sakata. Uh, in 1956, he proposed the so-called Sakata model. And uh, Sakata was uh, my teacher. And, uh, uh, okay, uh, in this model, it uh, suppose that the proton and the, the neutron and the lambda uh, are the fundamental element, and the other hadrons are composed of these three elements. Unfortunately, the accumulation of the data of hadron reveals that the Sakata model is incompa incompatible with some of the experimental results. Uh, eventually, the Sakata model was uh, replaced by the so-called uh, Koch model. So we, uh, I, 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 I jump to the Koch model. Okay, uh, in 1964, the German proposed a, a so-called uh, Quark model. Uh, a similar idea was proposed by Zweig. And in the Quark model, the uh, fundamental element are uh, three kind of the quarks. And, and they are uh, belong, belonging to different layer 
uh, from the hadron in the sense of the hierarchy of the matter. Uh, uh, here I, I show the structure of the hadron according to the Koch model. Uh, we know that the proton, the neutron, and the uh, Yuka particle are made of the uh, two types of the Koch U and the D. Okay? And uh, uh, strange particles, uh, lambda, sigma, xi, k, uh, contain the uh, third Koch S. And another point is that the P and lambda uh, are made of three Kochs. Uh, those are called uh, baryons. Uh, on the other hand, the uh, Yukawa particle pi and the k are uh, made of the quark and one anti-quark. Uh, uh, bar implies anti-particle, anti anti-quark. Uh, in, in this way, the all hadrons known at that time can be explained by three quarks. However, the quark have a, a curious uh, property uh, of the uh, fractional electric charge. Uh, they have the two side and the minus one side of the unit of electric charge. And such particle uh, okay and, uh, and, uh, and also the uh, isolated cork was not found experimentally. Uh, so uh, uh, it is said that the German himself did not believe the existence of the cork uh, as a, uh, as a uh, real object. Today, the most of the people accept the cork as a real object, but uh, even though they isolated the cork, are uh, not found. Okay. Anyway, at the moment of the 1970s, the list of the fundamental uh, particle uh, would be something like this. Uh, uh, with the reservation that uh, not all the people accepted the existence of coal. Here, uh, uh, one neutrino is added uh, compared to the previous slide. Uh, this is because that in 1962, uh, there are two kinds of the neutrino corresponding to each of the e, uh, electron and the muon. So, uh, Okay, the hadron replaced by coax, you, you, you should know that. You may know that uh, 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 there is an incomplete correspondence between the coax and lepton. Okay, you, you have to note that. Uh, next thing I'm going to explain is the uh, important development related to the interaction. Okay. Uh, uh, as we have seen uh, repeated, the special relativity and the quantum mechanics are uh, essential for the particle physics, and the relativistic quantum field theory uh, is the main tool. Now, field theory is uh, a suitable tool for the description of the particle phenomena. But uh, it uh, faced with difficulty in uh, taking into account the effect of the interaction. Uh, to explain this, uh, we need uh, uh, background knowledge so that uh, here I will give you only the intuitive explanation. Now, when we consider the motion of the particle in classical mechanics, uh, we usually took it. Uh, uh, we usually look at the, the, the position and the velocity or momentum of the particle as a dynamical variable. However, uh, when uh, particle creation and annihilation take place, that the variable associated uh, to a single particle are not enough uh, to describe the phenomena. The, we have to uh, take care of the behavior of the created particle too. The number uh, of which could be infinite. In field theory, the dynamical variable are the field variable associated to each uh, point of the space. Therefore, the uh, number of the dynamical variable is infinity. The infinite number of the variables take care of the creation and annihilation of the particle. However, uh, uh, 
uh, infinite number of the variable is dangerous. Uh, actually, in the course of the calculation of the effect of the interaction, that the divergent integral appear here and there. Uh, this is a problem of the divergence in the uh, field theory. And cure of this uh, difficulty uh, appeared around 1947. Then Tomonaga, Schwinger, Feynman uh, proposed independently a calculation method avoiding infinities, uh, at least in the relation among the uh, uh, observable quantity. This is called the uh, renormalization theory. Uh, however, their method was uh, applicable only to the electromagnetic interaction at that time. Uh, as we will see uh, soon later, this method is extended to the strong and weak interaction in the 1970s, uh, uh, more than 20 uh, years uh, later. Although it was limited to the electromagnetic interaction, the renormalization theory was quite powerful. Uh, this is uh, uh, just an example. The, the electron has a property of the magnet, and the magnetic moment is uh, proportional to its uh, 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 to the electron spin. And when we express it in this way, uh, in this way, uh, uh, question to G is uh, quite close to two. A small deviation from two is called the anomalous magnetic moment. And this value is calculated according to the renormalization theory. This is the latest result uh, of the calculation, theoretical calculation. And uh, uh, alpha uh, is a parameter uh, expressing the strength of the interaction. Uh, anyway, this is a theoretical value. And uh, the uh, experimental value is something like this. And the, the uh, uh, agreement is uh, uh, marvelous. Okay. So the, uh, this is a renormalization theory. Okay. Uh, I should hurry. And the uh, next topic re uh, related to the interaction is the, the discovery of the violation of the uh, fundamental symmetries. Uh, symmetry is uh, very important in physics. And in physics, uh, the symmetry is uh, defined as the invariance uh, of the law of the physics and the uh, certain transformation. Uh, we can think of the many kinds of transformations so that we can think of the uh, many kinds of the symmetry. Anyway, uh, here we uh, consider a simple example, uh, parity symmetry. The parity symmetry is invariance and uh, the space inversion transformation. And the space inversion, the uh, position vector change sign, okay? Uh, similarly, the velocity and the momentum vector also change the sign. But you should note that the angular momentum does not, because it, it is defined uh, by the product of the x and the p, so the uh, the uh, angular moment uh, does not change the sign and under the uh, parity transformation. Okay, and uh, those vectors like x uh, or p are called the polar vector uh, or simply vector. While those like uh, angular momentum uh, are called the axial vector or should vector. Uh, this difference becomes important in the next argument. Uh, anyway, the law of the classical physics, classical mechanics, and the classical electromagnetic theory are parity uh, symmetric. They are invariant under the, the, the space inversions. The, so, so the people believe that the law of the physics must be the parity symmetric. However, in the middle of the 20th century, it was found that the parity symmetry is violated in weak interaction. In 1956, 
The uh, two Chinese scientists, uh, uh, Chen Dao Li and Chen Ning Yang, pointed out that uh, the parity symmetry was not yet confirmed experimentally and could be uh, violated. Uh, soon after, uh, in 1957, uh, CSU confirmed the parity violation with the famous experiment uh, of the cobalt uh, 60 beta decay. Uh, this uh, distribution of the, the, the uh, emitted electron uh, from the uh, spin polarized cobalt is uh, uh, asymmetric with respect to uh, spin directions of cobalt. Uh, namely, the distribution of the emitted electron is uh, uh, expressed in, in this form, something like that. Uh, here, J is uh, the, the spin angular momentum of the initial cobalt, and the P is the momentum of the uh, emitted electron. Uh, under the space inversion, the second term changes the sign. Okay? Uh, remember that the J is the actual vector, so uh, the P is the polar vector. The, this implies that uh, the physics law is not invariant under the space inversion. So uh, parity symmetry is violated uh, in weak interaction. And uh, this was a great surprise for the people at that time. The uh, uh, careful study reveals that the weak interaction violates C symmetry uh, too. C uh, stands for the uh, uh, charge conjugation symmetry which is uh, uh, the invariance under the simple exchange of the particle and the antiparticle. And the important fact uh, is that the CP symmetry is not violated uh, in this uh, phenomena. And the CP symmetry means the invariance when we make a C and P transformation at the same. It's just slightly complicated. But uh, I hope that you can understand the situation where C and P are violated, but CP is not violated. Okay. Intuitively speaking, uh, violation of P and C are mutually compensated. And, uh, Okay. Anyway, CP symmetry implies that the particle and the antiparticle are essentially symmetric, although not exactly symmetric. In other words, the difference is not so serious because the difference can be compensated by the space invention. So, uh, uh, so uh, people at that time were relieved. However, in 1964, Cronin, which uh, discovered that the evidence of the CP violation what they uh, discover is that the uh, particle called the K long uh, uh, decays into two pions. Uh, also, it's a very small portion of the total decay. K long is one of the strange particles. Uh, it's a bit, little bit difficult to understand why the existence of this decay mode implies the CP violation. In short, uh, K long is a special particle. Uh, uh, which is a superposition of the particle and the antiparticle, then the, if the weight of the uh, superposition uh, are the same, uh, two contributions to this decay mode cancel to each other. Uh, therefore, the existence of that uh, two pi on decay implies that the weight of the particle and the antiparticle are uh, slightly different. Uh, this implies the symmetry between the particle and the antiparticle uh, uh, is uh, 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 is violated. Okay. Anyhow, the discovery of the CP violation was a great surprise, and uh, before uh, that, the particle and the antiparticle were even. However, CP violation implies that the particle and the antiparticle are essentially different. Uh, by the way, that the, uh, we know that uh, our universe is made of the particle. Uh, not antiparticle. As I said, uh, we, we, there is many electrons, but we, uh, there are no uh, poison uh, usually. This is a, a, a apparent sim uh, asymmetry between the particle and the antiparticle. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, today 
we believe that uh, this fact is related to the CP violation of the particle physics. Uh, unfortunately, I have no time to discuss this issue further. Okay, so far I, I explained the uh, major event before 1970s. Uh, finally, uh, uh, I, 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 I would like to go into the, the uh, establishment of the Stendhal model. Uh, I said that uh, uh, field theory is uh, suitable for the description of particle phenomena. Uh, however, the field theory is very broad. Among the field theory, there is a class of the theory called the gauge theory. And a typical example is that uh, uh, the theory of the electromagnetic interaction. The, from the viewpoint of the field theory, the electromagnetic force between the electron and the pro, uh, proton, for example, uh, is caused by the exchange of the photon. Uh, precise definition of the gauge theory is complicated, so here we just note that the gauge theory is a kind of theory in which a force is mediated by the special particle like a photon, which is called the gauge particle in general. Uh, uh, in case of the electromagnetic interaction, the gauge particle is only one photon. However, uh, such, such gauge theory is called abelian gauge theory, but uh, we can consider uh, a generalized gauge theory called uh, non-abelian gauge theory, in which uh, the number of the uh, 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 gauge particle is not one. Uh, it's multiple, and they are mutually interacting like this. And uh, uh, this kind of the theory is uh, known as Abelian gauge theory. Abelian, Abelian coming from the mathematics, which lies behind the construction of the theory. Uh, anyway, uh, what is shown by Tomonaga, Shibling, and Feynman uh, in, the, in the middle of 1940, it, as a renormalizability of the Abelian gauge theory. However, in 1971, the uh, has shown that uh, this generalized gauge theory are also renormalizable. The, this discovery had a great impact because according to this, it became the possible to describe the strong interaction uh, and weak interaction without being annoyed by the uh, uh, difficulty of the divergence. Uh, so, uh, okay. uh, probably it's not adequate to enter the detail of the, each theory, so uh, I just show you a summary table, and uh, in this, uh, in this uh, uh, column the name of the gauge particle are shown, okay, and uh, uh, here the common code uh, name of the theory. So the, you know, these three interactions, all these three interactions are described in the gauge theory. Okay, uh, uh, I should skip something. Mm. Sorry. Uh, So, uh, okay, uh, now, uh, uh, okay, uh, now uh, I like to uh, explain the uh, my own contribution to uh, the uh, standard model uh, very briefly in here. Uh, uh, as, uh, according to the Tufuft argument, uh, we, we, can, you know, we, we became uh, uh, it, it became uh, uh, possible to describe the, the all, all, all three interactions uh, according to the, the uh, renormalized of the theories. The, however, the, uh, 
the, the problem was that uh, the, 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 this new scheme of the uh, gauge theory can uh, explain the, the uh, uh, CP violation phenomena. So the, uh, in 1973, and what uh, we, uh, I, uh, with Mascara, considered is that uh, how to accommodate the CP violation in this new, new uh, uh, scheme of the field theory. The, uh, what I, uh, uh, we found at that time is that it's not possible uh, with uh, three or four corks. Uh, as I said, the, the, the German's original model uh, uh, has uh, three kinds of the corks, but uh, uh, within the framework of the gay theory, the three cork scheme is uh, some uh, has some flow, uh, as I say that the, the correspondence between the uh, left and the uh, cork are somewhat incomplete. If the four, there are four corks, then the, the correspondence is become complete. Uh, that is related to the, the uh, framework of the gay theory. Anyway, the, the, uh, what we found is that uh, it, it's not possible with the three or four corks uh, it's not possible to explain the CP violation with three or four cocks. And uh, this means that uh, the uh, uh, existence of the still unknown particles. Okay. Uh, so the, uh, what, uh, and uh, sadly, uh, the, we uh, uh, propose that the so-called six cock model uh, as a possible candidate of the, such a uh, extended uh, uh, system. Okay. This is uh, what we <coughs> Sorry, something. Okay. Uh, a six cocoa model implies that uh, uh, something like this, and uh, U, D, and S is, uh, are the original uh, quarks of the uh, uh, German. And uh, the, uh, our scheme is that uh, the new, new kind of this uh, quark C, T, and B, uh, the, the bot bottom uh, set uh, uh, has a, a, a minus one third of the unit charge, and the top uh, set uh, uh, two thirds of the uh, unit charge. And uh, it, it's a little difficult to explain the why six cork can violate the CP symmetry, and uh, why uh, four cork is not enough. Uh, what I can say here is uh, that uh, the very simple system becomes the, become the CP symmetry automatically. So that in order to accommodate the uh, CP violation, we need a certain level of the complex system. So uh, when I uh, explained about the, the, the strange particle, I say that the uh, Change from a st uh, a strange particle to non-strange particle takes place by weak interaction. Uh, at the uh, uh, cork level, this implies that the, the S cork uh, can change to U cork uh, by the weak interaction. Similarly, the change of the cork species is possible in all the combination uh, of the uh, U-type cork and the D-type cork. Therefore, the weak interaction of the uh, six cork uh, scheme is very, very complicated. And, and uh, this uh, 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 this allow the, 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 uh, uh, to accommodate the CP violation in this scheme. So uh, this is a very intuitive explanation. The, anyhow, the, in regards to the cock numbers, the border of the CP violation is between four and six, providing U and D type appear in pair. Okay, yes. soon after the publication uh, of the uh, 
uh, our paper, the existence of the sea cork, oh, sorry, uh, confirmed that, that this event has a great impact on people's view of the cork. The most uh, skeptical uh, opinion about the cork faded away. At the, uh, at most of the same time, uh, almost the same time, uh, a new particle was discovered in the lepton sector, which is called tau. And uh, tau lepton uh, shares uh, most of, uh, of the property with the electron and the muon. And then the tau is about uh, 3,000 times as heavy as the electron, about uh, 15 times as heavy as the muon. And uh, uh, the, those, uh, uh, the six cork and the six lepton are the, 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 the fundamental uh, element of, the, uh, of the, our world. And uh, together with the list of the, uh, uh, the fundamental particle, I, I, I like to show that the fundamental scheme of fundamental interaction. And uh, uh, this uh, total scheme is con uh, called the uh, standard model. Uh, for the, I have run out of time. Okay, see you. Two minutes, okay. Uh, so uh, I, I, I will. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, as As uh, we have, uh, uh, we, uh, as we uh, have learned that the six cork scheme can accommodate CP violation, but uh, it's a different story. And uh, whether this uh, mechanism actually the source of the observed CP violation, the, the verification of the uh, the e, this point was done uh, in Slack in United States and the KK in Japan using the so-called B factory uh, accelerator. A B factory is a special kind of accelerator focusing on the production of the special particle called B. And the uh, standard model predicts that the, in the decay process of the B meson, uh, uh, relatively large CP asymmetry as seen. So the, this asymmetry is confirmed uh, successfully at the B-factor experiment. Okay, uh, uh, another uh, experimental development is that uh, last month the Sun announced that uh, they have found that the Higgs particle, which has uh, been an only particle in the standard model that was not found yet. Uh, with the discovery of the Higgs particles, a major issue related to the standard model are uh, over. Uh, however, it, it does not imply the end of the particle physics. So finally, I, I'd like to, to uh, uh, mention about the future direction briefly. The one uh, expectation uh, is that the, there might be a new particle or a new interaction beyond the standard model. Uh, in the energy scale slightly higher than we have uh, already exam examined. Uh, in this direction, we will in investigate uh, the, the theoretical possibility is a supersymmetric theory. According to this theory, uh, we will have the plenty of the new particle at a certain energy scale. Another direction is a quantum gravity. As I said, that we have not yet had a satisfactory theory for quantum gravity. And uh, in this direction, the most promising uh, one is a, a strong string theory, uh, its developed version. For the moment, however, we do not know that what will come out from this approach. Okay, I'd like to stop here. Thank you. Yes, please. 
morning, Dr. Uh, Professor Kobayashi. I have two basic questions for you today. One is uh, the first question is: As the equation of the Einstein, we see we see that when we have the mass, the energies will be generated. So I wonder if we have if we have the energy, would the mass be generated? So and the second question for you is the. How can we see the part? How can we know the existence of the particle or anti-particle? Thank you. Uh, um, uh, energy and mass is uh, in, in, in some sense that the the identical. Okay. So the. Uh, actually, it's quite difficult problem that how the, the how to generate the all the, uh, mass of the all kind of the particle. The, uh, this is a still uh, uh, the uh, issue of the, uh, of the particle physics. And uh, uh, how to find an antiparticle? You mean? Is that the question? Okay. Uh, any antiparticle is just uh, it looks like ordinary particles. The, the, we can measure just the mass and the charge, so the, uh, uh, we can uh, find that uh, this is uh, antiparticles. Uh, I would suggest that uh, whoever has more question. Uh, we'll go to the uh, parallel session to the camp of Professor Kobayashi, and then I'm sure there will be a chance to ask uh, many more questions. But I would like uh, to take this opportunity to thank, on my own personal behalf, and all of you, uh, your behalf, on the very uh, uh, immense effort he made to come here. Not only is coming from very far, but he had a very, very long flight. He had delays of uh, over 11 hours. And he could easily just decide that he won't make it and go home and stay at home. But nevertheless, he came just for this one single day, all the way from Japan here with a almost 12 hour delay. So Professor Kobayashi, thank you very much. Thank you. is the one responsible for the fact that we are all here. Professor Kobayashi, it was not mentioned, but he is the chairman of the International Advisory Committee of the Asian Science Camps. So he and his committee has a right to decide whether or not it will take place here or in another place, and, and they are uh, governing and the, the entire Asian Science Camp project. So once again, thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to say something more? No. Okay, thank you.